Hi friends, welcome to the online presence of First Presbyterian Church in Sterling, Illinois. So glad that you have come to join us here on our YouTube channel to see what we've been doing and to hear God's word preached for you. We are a welcoming and inclusive church in Sterling at 410 Second Avenue, and we welcome you to join us in person anytime you're able at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. And of course, you can always find us here at our home on the web on our YouTube channel. You can also find us online on our website at firstpresbyterianstirling.org. And um, we're on Facebook, so look us up and see what we're doing. Check out the pictures. In the meantime, if you'd like to support our ministries, you can always mail a check to 410 Second Avenue um, in Sterling 61081, or you can go to our website and just click the donate button to give online. We appreciate the support that we receive from you and all the ways in which you help support our many ministries in our community and in the world. Friends, I want to invite you to listen with me to our reading today from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. And then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. 
In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, In the evening you shall know it was the Lord who has brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you should complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there was on the surface of the wilderness a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Friends, I invite you to join your hearts together with me in prayer. Gracious God, wherever and whenever we are, as we listen to this story, as we reflect on your word, as you listen to the words that your spirit has given to me, may we have open hearts and minds, eyes and ears. May we be ready to serve God in this place and every place. May we have confidence in the good news that God is with us today and every day. Send your spirit upon us this day, we ask. Amen. One of my very favorite lines from a TV show is, in or out, doorways creepy. A very grumpy mother says it to her adult child who has come to ask for a favor and is feeling a little bit worried about how it's going to go. And it's a powerful reminder that there is something innate in us as human beings that dislikes thresholds. We do not like being between two things. But these are the precise places where God shows up. Or rather, these are the places where we do better at seeing the way that God, who is with us in every moment, is showing up in that moment. I love that Celtic theology has this understanding that thresholds are sacred. Holy space between ethereal and earthly. A threshold between what was and what will be. A threshold between expectations and reality. A threshold between who we are and who we thought we would be. There are simply so many thresholds that we tread on the edge of every single day. Right now, all of us walk on the thread of the threshold, threshold of the world before COVID and an unimagined future. It is such a shaping moment that it's easy to forget that there were other thresholds before. We start to imagine that the world has never experienced anything like the COVID pandemic. And we forget about September 11th. We forget about the Oklahoma City bombing. We forget about all the moments where the world seemed permanently changed in unthinkable ways and a future was unimaginable. We forget about the ways we have been changed by those things. We forget about the ways they have prepared us for the present in which we live 
and for a future which is still coming. We find ourselves today with God's people as they travel a threshold. They have left behind their life of slavery in Egypt, but now in the wilderness they struggle to be free. They are so used to the patterns of captivity that they would rather go back to Egypt than sit with the uncertainty of change. They complain about Moses and Aaron and about how they used to be able to smell the food cooking for the Egyptians while they sat by and ate bread. And God, God listens to their complaints and God promises them everything that they need. God promises them holy bread and quail. God promises them abundance. God promises to be with them into a future they can't imagine. Those of you who know this story know that the abundance that they receive does not solve their anxiety as they live into threshold space. They continue to yearn for the ways of the past. They struggle to imagine a liberated future, a future that seems so vague and different that they simply cannot get their heads around it, no matter how clearly God seems to lay it out for them. They stay stuck on this threshold for an entire generation. Almost every church I know has been stuck in a threshold recently. At some point between the beginning of COVID and now, we all seem to have gotten hooked on something. Some got stuck at the pivot to worship at home. Some got stuck at the pivot back to buildings. Some got stuck at both of those pivots in equally painful ways. Some are stuck with a different landscape of this moment than the time before. And I'm not sure that I know any church that has stepped all the way forward into the new promised land that is ahead. I'm not sure that the new promised land is here yet. The more I found myself thinking about this, the more I realized that in my entire life, the church has really only ever known threshold moments. I have gone to big churches full of people. I have gone to small churches where you knew everyone. I have gone to programmatic churches. And what I remember is that the church of my childhood wanted to be different from the past, but was stuck in their old ways of being. As much as they wanted to let go, they couldn't be anything other than what they had always been, standing in the door, looking back and not forward. The church of my adult life has struggled to be relevant to a changing world sometimes even failing to grasp the way that the world has changed around us. The more I think about thresholds, the more I realize that I am not sure that churches are meant to be settled. I think maybe we are always meant to live in this in-between. Maybe we are always meant to inhabit the doorways between what was and what is standing between, hoping for what will be. The challenge is the way we stand. If we stand looking back to the past, we miss what is ahead. We harden our hearts, refusing to hope that God might be doing something better than what used to be. And we shut off the hope of progress and change for us. When we stand looking forward, We show our trust that God, who has been with us from the very beginning, is with us now. The past has within it the promise of God's fidelity and love, but it's the future in which we minister together. We cannot go back and minister in the past, and the future that is ahead is not going to look like the things that were before. The greatest news I have for you this day is that God who knew us in the past and cared for us 
knows the future for which we need to be prepared. And God is shaping and molding us so that we will be ready for it every moment of every day. These people of God who we meet out in the wilderness, they continue to be changed in incremental way. They meet God in the Ten Commandments. They learn about what justice looks like. They start to leave behind a world of slavery and pain and sorrow. So we too, each day, grow closer to God's kingdom for us. We learn to set aside the ways of the world we learn to embrace God's promise of hope and of redemption. We do not need to yearn for the past, remembering it to be safer, better, more fun. For the truth is, I think our memories fail us all. If you remember the church as being settled, my guess is you just missed the threshold you were standing on in that moment but we can hold tight to the promise that God is with us. We can turn our faces and look forward, trusting that the church that has been with us from the very beginning is going to continue until Christ comes again. That God is working a plan within us, a plan for hope and a plan for future. But the blueprint for it is not back there. It's right there right in front of you. So turn your faces towards the future. Trust in God to show you the way. Know that you are being prepared right now, every moment of every day, for the good things that God has in store for you, for the church, and for the world. God has put all things in place for us and for others for a future that sets us free to be more faithful. Amen.